All right, guys, now let's go over hardware vulnerabilities, supply chain vulnerabilities, and some virtualization vulnerabilities. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is understanding hardware vulnerabilities. So hardware vulnerabilities arise from physical devices in our computing systems. This could include anything ranging from computers, routers, servers, switches, even IoT devices, and also embedded system. So when our actual hardware gets exploited, here's what we mean by that. We have former vulnerabilities. We have end of life hardware, meaning a device is now end of life and cannot be patched, then legacy systems. So this legacy system may differ from end of life in that maybe it still is supported by the vendor, but its actual hardware can't compute with the new encryption standards that we have. So it's just not compatible with current security standards or software updates. So why are hardware vulnerabilities hard to detect and why do we want to prevent this at all costs? Well, obviously we don't want any vulnerabilities on our network. However, hardware vulnerabilities, like if you have malware or a root kit that infects the firmware, using traditional security methods of scanning like antivirus, anti-malware, sometimes they don't look beyond just the operating system. When we have hardware vulnerabilities, they can be very hard to detect. Even if you re-image or you reinstall or you factory reset, when it sits at that root level, at the kernel level, at the actual firmware, it's going to be hard to detect. That's why we should have things like secure boot for our computers that have it and to make sure that we're regularly updating our firmware making sure that if we have EOL hardware that can be replaced, that it gets replaced. Now, obviously, as we've talked about in this course, sometimes you have critical services or servers that sit on EOL hardware that you can't just replace, right? And obviously, you want to limit the use of legacy systems in critical applications. Again, sometimes you can't uh, prevent legacy systems from being used, especially in ICS and SCADA environments. A lot of times you will see legacy systems. So what we want to do also is have mitigation on our network, okay? Have mitigating techniques and prevention techniques and technologies and software. Virtualization. So virtualization vulnerabilities. What they do, rather than physical, is they're going to take resources from that device, like a computer or a bare metal server, and then distribute it to a bunch of virtual machines, okay? So virtual vulnerabilities include stuff like Sandbox Escape, VM Escape, and uh, malware detonation within virtualization. So when we have a VM, guys... What we don't want is the VM to escape to the underlying hypervisor. Okay, and then we have cloud-specific vulnerabilities. So in our cloud environment, we're going to have a lot of different specific vulnerabilities that are unique to the cloud. So let's go over this. So what does the cloud provide us? So the cloud provides us with storage, compute, and network resources that can be accessed over the internet. Okay? They provide this through different deployment models like infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. This is going to include serverless technologies, server technologies, like deploying an actual VM to run a server from the ground up. This is going to include databases, microservices that can be used, APIs and API endpoints. This is going to be the basics of what a cloud service provider can provide us. So what are these specific vulnerabilities? Well, when we're accessing something over the internet, we already have the inherent risk of man-in-the-middle attacks, but that's really not what we're talking about here. We can misconfigure the cloud 
but because we may not know what we're doing, we can deploy an API to the cloud that may be insecure, that can be vulnerable to DDoS attacks. And we could also have infrastructure as a service, servers and services running that we don't properly protect. What we want to do when we're deploying things to the cloud is to make sure that we have good IAM, good network security. This involves deploying VPCs, having secure web gateways. And also we want to make sure we configure services properly. Later on in this section, I'll bring up our cloud console. So I don't know if I showed yesterday, but we can bring it up. Our Google Cloud console, let me get rid of this. So we talk about the different services that it can provide, right? We can have VM instances on here. And if I leave this VM on, that public IP, that external IP it's going to be delivered is going to be easily web scraped, right? Anyone can go discover it, can then try to exploit that cloud-based service using like default credentials that if I didn't harden it, if I have open ports and services on there, if I didn't put any firewall statements, I could have a bunch of different things exposed from this Linux VM that I deploy on my cloud console. Supply chain vulnerabilities. So we have key, and we've already talked about supply chain a lot, guys, so I'm not going to uh, beat you over the head with this. But we have service provider vulnerabilities. So risk arising from third-party service providers include cloud services, hosting, and managed IT services. So just in the supply chain, think about the service providers you have. Hardware providers, think about the vendors you use. Software providers, make sure you're going through reputable software providers. And if you go with a startup for maybe a critical application you want to use, make sure that you do have a plan in case that startup potentially goes out of business because it is something we would have to worry about. All right, check on learning. Let's go ahead and check this out, guys. All right, question one. What is the primary security concern when dealing with end-of-life hardware or software? So it's going to be the lack of ongoing manufacturer support and security updates. Question two. What is a significant security concern when reusing resources in a virtualized environment? Go with C. That is the potential for residual data from one VM to be accessible to another VM. Question three, why is firmware security considered a critical aspect of enterprise security? Let's see here. D, firmware is frequently updated, making it a common dope. Yep, compromised firmware can provide attackers with low level control over hardware components. Question four, what is the primary security focus when dealing with service providers in an enterprise environment? We're going to go with C, ensuring that service providers adhere to the agreed upon security standards and practices. Question five, what is a primary security concern regarding the supply chain in enterprise security? We're going to go with C, the possibility of introducing vulnerabilities or compromised components into the enterprise environment. Then we have question six. In the context of virtualization security, what does the term VM escape refer to? It's going to be C, a security breach in which an attacker gains access to the host system from within a VM. All right. Awesome, guys. 